Hey guys, welcome to another episode of VTech Academy. You're about to get school. AD and I are here with our 07 Civic that had an R18 motor that was bad. Uh, we are getting ready to install the new motor. Uh, luckily, I just happened to have a Type R motor <laughs> sitting over there in my uh, shop. So uh, we're going to use that motor. It's basically architecturally the same as the 06 Civic motor that comes out of this. In fact, it can be run by the 06 Civic ECU. Uh, we had to make didn't have to. We made a few changes to it to make it uh, compatible with our car. Let me show you real quick what we did. We did a couple of changes to the to the engine. Uh, one of the things is we put the purge valve from the 06 Civic on. Uh, we put a wiring harness from the 06 Civic on because that has the proper connectors uh, up at the uh, ECU. Uh, we also put an 06 Civic SI transmission. Good transmission. It's got an LSD. Uh, obviously, it's going to be compatible with this chassis. Um, but, uh, as you can see, if I flip around here real quick, this Type R motor actually comes with the uh, bracket that mounts to the oil pan, so uh, that's also going to be compatible with our rear mount. Uh, one last thing we did is we took our EP3 idler pulley and put it on there. This engine was kind of stripped down. It was missing alternator, idler pulley, a bunch of vacuum lines, throttle body. So we, we grabbed all those from other cars, put them on, so the engine should be ready to go in. Uh, something about the idler pulley. Uh, on the 06 Civic, uh, it has electronic power steering. This car has hydraulic power steering, uh, but more on that as we get into it. Hey guys, let's break away from the shop for a moment just to kind of show you how I did my design work. Uh, basically, I have uh, the FD stock and the FG1 stock overlaid here, and uh, we'll pull them apart real quickly. These are the three brackets. Here's our original FD stock. What I needed with that was these bolt hole locations in relationship to these bolt hole locations, which I then made on this new bracket. And once I did that, I needed to get some information from this particular bracket. This particular bracket, because it goes in the FG1 subframe, I needed to know where this particular location was, so I made that there. And the other thing I needed to know was where these holes in the back that go on the brace that goes to the side of the car. I needed to know where those locations were. So I basically overlaid uh, my parts together and from that I was able to derive this third part that used that worked with our uh, engine in our new chassis. These are the mounts. Uh, okay. Alright, these... Right. <laughs> in the first episode we uh, just a little bit of exploration with the engine in here. We actually wound up using the stock mounts and found out that we could physically bolt the motor in with a few changes. So I got on the drawing board and made some design changes and this is what we came up with. This is our new passenger size mount. It's uh, got the brace that goes back to the frame rail. Uh, we actually put a gap in it for a power steering line that goes through. Again, power steering, this has uh, hydraulic power steering. Uh, this is the mount, just kind of our normal Hasbro mount, uh, goes on that side over there. Then uh, for the passenger side, we did something a little bit different. We actually decided to make it kind of a two-piece mount. So this is what goes on top of the transmission. We have this mount that bolts on top of that. And then we have our frame rail mount that bolts on the frame rail to allow us to uh, bolt that all together. Then on the rear mount, this is actually the normal rear mount you would find in an FD2 kit. The difference is the mount was actually too thick for our subframe. Our subframe is a little bit different. So what we're going to do is we're going to come up with a special thinner mount that we can use with the stock subframe so you don't have to get the SI subframe. And that should uh, fix that. But dimensionally, you know, the center hole and center hole, that was all the same. Uh, so we just needed to uh, make a change to uh, the thickness of the mount. Let's bolt it in.
Okay, actually in preparation of uh, installing the motor, we took the studs that were in the mounts. Normally on, in this block bracket, there's actually one long long stud in here. Uh, I find it's a lot easier to maneuver the engine. Sometimes you have to do, you know, kind of slide it around in order to get things to work. Also on the transmission side, uh, there are two studs typically to kind of the transmission. We remove both of those as well. Passport provides hardware so that you don't have to use the studs. Uh, but uh, anyway, we're gonna put the driver's side in first. Which one goes in first doesn't really matter. And it may depend on how level your lift is or how level, you know, whether or not you're taking the engine in from the top or the bottom. By the way, if you're taking it in from the top, you're probably gonna have to remove the, the, the core support and the radiator and the radiator fans, all sorts of stuff to get in from the top. Uh, but uh, the way my lift is set up, uh, usually one side is slightly higher than the other. So we're gonna start off with the engine side. subframe this is the stock subframe that came on this particular chassis uh, it's a, like a not quite as heavy duty version of the SI uh, subframe now the steering rack will actually uh, fit on either one of those you can use the electronic power steering rack in the subframe as you would um, if you were doing an electronic power steering conversion which the SI has so it'll bolt right in uh, we're going to try and leave hydraulic in here and see if we can't get that to work uh, you notice on the front, there's just looks like it's just a tube. Normally on the SI, there's a front engine mount, but the Hasport mounts, we really don't care about the front engine mount, so we're not going to worry about that. Uh, as you can see here, we already have our mount uh, bolted in. If we had the SI subframe, and we could, even with hydraulic power steering, we would use the SI rear mount, but we don't have that. What we have is the FG1 or the, the R18 based one. So this particular mount, is actually the one we use for the R18. The only difference is we've changed the bushings in it uh, to the ones that we use with the SI mount. Uh, we found out it lines up and works perfectly. So uh, we went ahead and installed the rear mount on here. Uh, very easy to do when it's outside of the car. And we're gonna lift the subframe up in position and this mount will slide right into the rear bracket. All right, let's take a look at it real quickly. You can see right here, the rear mount, short and stubby. Had to use a little bit of persuasion to get it in. Sometimes I find if you leave this bolt loose, it makes it a little bit easier to get it in. So might try that next time. Uh, we actually cheated and put our intermediate shaft in before we put the subframe on, because uh, it's kind of hard to reach the bolts once the subframe's in there uh, without extensions anyway yeah that's what it looks like from the bottom 
time. Looks like that subframe was made for this engine too. Well, we have our engine in. Sitting just like it would in an SI with Hasport's new FG1K kit. That's going to be it for this episode of VTech Academy. On the next episode, we're going to start hooking everything up. So I'm going to show you how to hook up the electrical, uh, axles, the shift linkage, uh, the fuel, brake booster, all that good stuff. We'll talk to you later. By the way, if you like what you saw, please hit the like button. If you really like it, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell so you get notifications when more videos come out. If you guys own one of these cars, I think it's going to be a popular swap in the future. And I will go over how to do a swap with the K24 in this car as well. Anyway, thanks for joining me. Thank <laughs> you.